the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Welcome to a service of the Word for Mothering Sunday. Special thanks to Reverend Hazel for the intercessions. Patricia and Stephanie recorded their readings, so many thanks to them, as well as to Richard Braid and the Christ Church Virtual Choir and Soloists for all the music. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the book of Exodus. A man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, 
she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Here ends the first reading.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Here ends the second reading. When I was a very new curate, I was given the job of doing the morning assembly at the local church primary school on the topic of love for Mother's Day. I'd not done very many assemblies, so it was like being thrown to the lions. It's good for me. What I did was not a particularly original idea. In fact, it was a fairly well-known trick that you might find familiar. Anyway, the whole school came in to see a large pet carrier with colourful danger signs on it sitting on a stool at the front of the hall and I was shushing the children in case it woke up. I offered someone the chance to be the new owner of the unusual, dangerous and special pet I had in the box. However, there are severe drawbacks. For a start, this pet is very, very demanding when it is first born. It needs feeding six or eight times a day, including in the middle of the night. It regularly makes a nasty and smelly mess that needs cleaning up and needs a bath every day. When it gets a bit bigger, you have to spend a lot of time talking to it, playing with it and taking it out for walks. They can also be quite mischievous and can mess up your things if it's left on its own. It can make you worry and have sleepless nights. This can last for years and it just keeps on growing. It can get into trouble and often end up bigger than you are. All this time it has cost you well over £8,000 a year to feed and look after. And people often have two or three or more of them. Now amazingly there were still some children who wanted one and were keen to volunteer to see what this terrible creature was that was inside my pet carrier. A brave girl was chosen to open the grill and look inside. Now there was a mirror stuck on the back of the carrier inside. So she peered in and saw her own reflection and literally jumped in shock. Lots of others then had a look in before the word got round what was in the box and the point was made. We are all very demanding pets. We are all difficult and dangerous and wonderful and lovely and costly and cause stress and are unique and special. Who on earth would want to love and care for us? The point being that we should be grateful to and give thanks for anyone who wants to care and nurture us, whether they are our mother or not. I told you it wasn't very original. But that simple message is what today is all about the true nature of mothering on Mothering Sunday. The, addition, the traditions around celebrating this day go back centuries, when some people were encouraged to return to worship in their mother church, where they had been baptised, or to make a longer journey to the mother church or the cathedral of the diocese. There was often a lovely ceremony that I wish we still did of clipping the church. The congregation would stand in a ring around the outside of the church before holding hands to give the church a big collective hug. It would be great to be allowed to do that for our first time back in church this Sunday. The Gospel for today gives us a clear indication of the true nature of mothering. At the very start of Jesus' life, Simeon knew that Mary would have her heart pierced by being the mother of the Chosen One that had come to save us all. It meant to her that her lovely little boy was going to suffer and to die and she just had to accept it at God's will, however much she didn't want that to happen. Today we are celebrating the whole God-given idea of mothering. On this special Mothering Sunday, it is wonderful to honour our own mothers, but we must also to remember to honour all those who in some way fulfil the role of mothering in our lives. That includes grandmothers, aunts, big sisters and godmothers. Of course, it has to include all the men, who have also provided us with care and nurture, as well as neighbours, friends, teachers, bosses, who have looked out for us. In fact, it is a day for all those whose love and affection have contributed in some way to sheltering and nurturing us throughout life. That old joke with the mirror that made the point to the children that we are demanding and quite hard to love if we are considered as pets shows what a powerful force for good is, mothering. 
which is why it is such a good image to express the love of God for us. God has to put up with such a lot from us. We sin, we turn away from him, and yet he still loves us. God is the pattern for all parenthood and all relationships. We need to be strengthening, encouraging and forgiving, serving, loving and surrendering. We need to mother each other as God mothers us. So nobody can feel left out today. Men can mother as much as women. You don't need to have had children to mother. On Mothering Sunday, we give thanks with great joy for all those who have shown a mother's love to us. That includes Mary, the mother of our Lord, our mother of the church, our own mothers, and all the others who have cared and nurtured us. And we pray that they will continue in that love and that we will continue to be nurtured by it while we are showing that love to others ourselves, as Jesus taught us. Let us pray to God, who loves all people as a mother loves her children. We pray for our spiritual mother, the Church, and we ask that your peace may be given to Christians of all denominations. We pray for our bishops, clergy and their families. We thank you for enabling us to worship together on this Mothering Sunday, whether it be in church or at home, rejoicing in the knowledge that we are all joined with our Christian family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and we pray for peace and friendship. We ask for your help in encouraging nations to strive to be one family in your love. We thank you for the scientists worldwide who have worked so hard to make a vaccine to help protect us from the severe effects of the coronavirus and for enlightening the leaders of the world and their citizens on its benefits to humankind. On this special Sunday, we pray for all those who have not been able to see their mothers in person recently and miss them. Give those families the strength to see them through today 
and the days that follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for our local communities. We thank you for the patience of all those involved with the continuation of children's education and upbringing, the parents and the families who have helped children with their educational routines, the teachers who have needed to teach at school and online, and the youth group leaders who have adapted their programmes so that children could participate from home. We share with the children their excitement of meeting all their classmates. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our sovereign Queen Elizabeth and her family at this difficult time. We appreciate her dedication to the Church of England and the Commonwealth and her role as a mother figure to so many organisations of which she is patron. We thank you for her words of wisdom about being vaccinated to help protect others. We pray for the government and all those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend to your love and care those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and especially those known to us. We give thanks for those whose health has improved and we acknowledge the selflessness of the people who cared for them during their illnesses. We pray for mothers who can no longer care for the children they bore. And we pray for those people who are no longer to communi able to communicate with their mothers. We pray for the women and men who have taken on those roles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcome, Lord, into your calm and peaceful kingdom, those who out of this present life have departed to be with you. Today, we particularly remember parents and children who have died, leaving grieving families. Grant them peace. We pray for those who have recently died. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the comfort you provide in all our troubles and for the richness of all our relationships.
Let us pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our crosses and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.